Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this we're going to the video, we're going to be analysing some Ryzen 7 performance results. Primarily focused on gaming, but also touching on some synthetic benchmarks, 3D rendering, that type of stuff as well. Now, if you're just interested in the results and analysis, you can skip forward about a minute. However, for regular viewers, I feel like I owe you guys a bit of an explanation as to what's going on. So, as you probably are aware, I did order a Ryzen 7 1700X along with the appropriate motherboard. And basically, it just wasn't dispatched. Essentially, I contacted Amazon late last night, and they told me it was being sent. There was no issue, no no worries. It was just going to be late in the dispatch queue. I was like, cool. I contacted them again this morning when I noticed that I literally just kind of rolled about 7 a.m. And I checked my phone, and it was like, you are pretty much on a pre-order. We'll let you know when the hardware is ready to dispatch. I was like, what the hell? And I double-checked, contacted another representative, and she said, essentially, the first rep lied to me, and there was no way that the hardware would have been sent out because they just didn't have the allocation. I was pretty pissed, I won't lie. So I, and myself and Amy, basically, were doing a lot of Googling, and finally, we managed to find stock on a website called Aria. This is not me advertising for, you, for, for them, excuse me, I'm just telling you what happened. And I managed to order a 1700X along with a motherboard. So I contacted them after I ordered it from pure paranoia. And they told me that no problem at all. It is being sent. It has been dispatched. I'm good. So that I paid for expedited delivery. So that will arrive in the morning. Okay, so that's the explanation over and done with. But I did want to put this video out because I do know a lot of folks. I've got quite a lot of messages on Facebook asking me, should people buy it? You know, should I buy it? And I wanted to put this out because I think it's only fair. Um, I will be running through this stuff anyway myself, obviously, when I build the machine. And I can give you a greater insight into this. But as I said, I think it's only fair that I put this video out just to inform you of my opinion thus far after analysing several other reviews. Now... I'm going to be really honest with you. Um, I'm going to tell you my thoughts and opinions up front, and then I'll explain why. The reason behind that is just because if you only want my opinion, should you buy it or not, then you'll get that first. My opinion is if you have a good CPU and you only game, don't buy it now. Um, and I don't mean that in a harsh way. It's just there are clearly some issues with the CPU, and I'll go into what those are in just a moment. But let's say for the sake of argument, you have a GTX 1070, a 1080, something along those lines. You've got a 4790, preferably a 6600K or a, or a 6700K, something like that. You're absolutely golden. If you only game, and I stress you only game, you don't do streaming, you don't care about video editing, you don't give a crap about 3D rendering, by all means, just you know, pause the video, stop it, do something else. That's absolutely fine. But if you do other things, then Ryzen may be more interesting. So why is there problems? Well, it appears that Ryzen is not quite up to snuff when it comes to gaming. And there have been some tests done by folks already. And essentially, PC gaming, um, obviously, typically, you're going to run the highest resolution possible for your monitor. Regular viewers will also know that one of the criticisms I had with a lot of the benchmarks AMD had shown off, first of all, they were very, very, very similar to one another. It was always video e editing, it was always um, city bench, and we always saw the game running at 4K, which does not give you an indication of performance. I don't care if you're running a GTX 1080, I don't care if you're running a Titan, at the end of the day... There are going to be instances of 4K where you're pushing the GPU to the limit, not the CPU. So, basically, I would have preferred to have seen 1080p results, but we just didn't get them. And the problem with a lot of the leaks is, for whatever reason, people were just not running games with either good CPU, uh, GPUs, like sometimes they were running at like a, like a RX 290X or something like that. I'm not saying it's a crap GPU, but if you're running at the highest resolution your monitor can handle then once again, the T90X is possibly going to be the limitation. So what we've found since is that, um, well, AMD have actually suggested to reviewers to run at 1440p or higher, which is not ideal. The second suggestion that AMD have given to certain reviewers is to disable SMT. 
Now, SMT, for those of you who are not initiated into the meaning, it basically means simultaneous multi-threading. This essentially means you've got two virtual cores for every one real core. I won't go into the ins and outs of how it works in this particular video, but it basically means that you can schedule work better across multiple processor cores. The problem with that is you get resource contention. Now, AMD had gone on record and said that there won't really be major resource contention with Ryzen simply because uh, they've put in adequate amount of cash, you know, all of this stuff that we've discussed dozens of times over. However, that doesn't seem to be the case with games. And another suggestion was disabling HPET, which is the High Performance Event Timer in, right in Windows and or BIOS. And this is true for certain games, but not all games. So, from what I can gather, and feel free to, you know, message me on this, feel free to, you know, put some comments in the, well, you know, comment box, but it would appear that Ryzen does have some issues with games in the moment, and it seems to be something which may improve with BIOS updates. And to emphasize, that isn't to say that all games are going to suffer. But let's take a couple of examples, and we can kind of start giving some understanding as to what I mean by this, shall we? So, we'll start out with some graphs from PC Gamer, and you can see immediately that games like Rise of the Tomb Raider perform better with SMT disabled. We can see the same for, oh, let's go with um, Hitman. It's not a massive disparity, but still, it is a few frames per second. The same thing could also be said with Far Cry Primal. The 1800X goes from 101 down to 85 with SMT enabled. The same thing could also be said for GTA, not that big of a deal, however, it's only a couple of frames a second. Meh. But this is not something you would typically see with Intel CPUs. With all of that said, and this is perhaps the most imperative thing to remember, the CPU is still doing rather well when it comes to synthetic benchmarks, or 3D rendering, or video editing. For example, looking at PC Gamer's Cinebench R15, it stomps, absolutely stomps, it decimates, it murders the 7700K, it beats the 6900K, and the same thing could be said for X264 as well, where it definitely beats out the, um, the 6850, for example, and really is pretty much within spitting distance of the 6900K. It's so close to one another, and this could be said for a variety of different uh, uh, benchmarks. I'm not going to go through all of them because you can see yourself. That, that really means, though, is that, for example, in Guru 3D, they've got Far Cry Primal running on a GTX 1080 once again, and their results is that it's exactly the same as a 6700K. Um, and why I say exactly the same, we're in one frame a second. Obviously, as resolution improves, the, dip, the gulf between the pack starts to diminish, because obviously you're starting to run the processor um, at higher... Uh, sorry at uh, less of a disadvantage because essentially the GPU is now becoming the thing which is pushing the frames per second. And this is um, something we can start seeing. For example, hardware Canucks have a couple of very telling results as well. The 1800X is slower than the 67600K in, let's say, DOS X. And you can also say the same for other titles. For example, let's go for Battlefield 1, once again on hardware Canucks, and Generally speaking, yes, the performance is certainly very, 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 very acceptable. I mean, 117 frames a second at 1080p, not exactly unplayable, but it's also slower than the 7700K, um, you know, and that's just kind of a problem. And once again, SMT Disabled does improve some of this frame rate, but it's not necessarily the deal breaker. And some of this is definitely to do with raw clock speed, without a question in my mind. Taking a look at it, however, a couple of real-world applications which I certainly use quite frequently, Adobe Premiere Pro, it stomps the 7700K, and it really stomps the 7600K. It beats out the 6900K, which is very... Sorry, it doesn't beat out, but it's within spitting distance of 6900K. And the same thing could be said for 7-Zip. It, you know, murders Intel's CPUs, and of course, 
And this goes without saying, this CPU is about 60% faster than AMD's previous best. So that's definitely a good thing. It's definitely a massive improvement, IPC improvement. What does all of this mean to you as a prospective owner of the particular CPU in question? And I say particular CPU because you could have been thinking of getting the 1700X or the 1800X. I would possibly say to wait... It's definitely exciting to get a new piece of hardware, but if you've already got a good CPU, it's probably not worth it. The exception is if you are looking for a processor which is not only for this purpose of gaming, or you want to do some streaming. For example, for me, I'm just going to be frankly honest with you, I have a 6700K which is currently overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz. And it's fast. It's not bad. It's, you know, in pretty much every game, it's going to rip through it, no issue at all. And it's pretty good for media encoding, but um, I'm probably going to be giving this system to Amy because her system's getting a little bit older, and I'll be keeping the Ryzen system. Why? Because I use a freaking lot of applications at once. I typically have loads of web browsers open at once, not that they're particularly you know, super duper texting, but I also generally am encoding at once. I might have Adobe Photoshop, uh, Photoshop, excuse me, open. I sometimes am running virtual machines because sometimes I do some development work. So sometimes VMs are nice. Just basically, I do a lot of stuff which requires a lot of cores. So my usage scenario definitely lends itself to Ryzen. But if your usage scenario does not lend itself well to Ryzen, and yours may not, I'm not saying it does or it doesn't, that's for you to decide, well, then kind of go from there. I have linked some reviews in the video description, so you can check out some of them. I will be doing an in-depth look at this over the next couple of days, and by in-depth, I mean exhaustive. I happen to have a lot of hardware already available. It's just basically that we didn't get the motherboard and the processor, which sucked. But um, I will be doing a lot of looking at this with multiple different graphics cards and kind of disabling enabling calls and buggering around and give you my thoughts on it so let me know like are you still disappointed with it are you happy with it are you like you know it's about what you expected give me some thoughts on this there are some other bits and pieces i'd like to kind of jump into on this video but frankly i just don't have quite time for it tonight because i'm already really rushed um i've been putting benchmarks together for something unrelated to ryzen so that's basically going to be done, and hopefully I can get that up and the first impressions of Ryzen this weekend. And next weekend, by next weekend, we also will have some reviews of a new case we've been given, actually for Ryzen. And that's another thing. We were actually given the really nice Aurora case by BitPhoenix. Um, that is a review sample, and we were sent it for Ryzen. So it's like, you know, we have a nice case, we've got... Uh, good amount of RAM and all this stuff, so we will be reviewing all of that, and um, it's going to be kind of a cool week, so definitely stick around with us. Anyway, um, hopefully you've enjoyed the video, or maybe not, depending on uh, whether Ryzen is a disappointment or a treat to you. Let me know. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.